Monte Verde Cloud Forest is not a national park, it's private. It belongs to the Tropical Science Center. The money you pay to come today here goes into environmental education program, investigation, recycling, <coughs> buy more land, maintain the trails. I mean, all your money <coughs> go back into the park, into different projects. We're gonna see a very beautiful forest. <laughs> we hope to see some wildlife. But I think something very important that we have to know that we are also contributing to keep protecting the forest. I have 20 years doing these tours and I remember many people saying, we were here on honeymoon 18 years ago and now they bring one or two children. They want to show them what they saw before. That's the idea. Protect for the next and the next generations. Okay? This is an example of that. This is what we call plastic wood or recycle plastic. All those empty bottled water, all those plastic bags, after we use it, they come back like this. The idea is not to use it. If we can not get plastic bags from the supermarkets or from anywhere else, it's better. And if we use it, let's be responsible with that plastic bags or bottles of water, plastic bottled water, and recycle them. That's what we're trying to do. Okay? And this works out very good. Lasts longer. We don't have to waste it into the rivers and then end up in the ocean. So this is a very good project that you can see right away. Recycle. All this on the trail too. That's a recycle as well. Anyways, on the way, ask questions. It's very important. I will try to give you the information. Uh, the forest is spectacular. We have this wonderful weather. I told the people this is like a natural air condition. It's very comfortable. In other places, it gets very hot and uh, but here it's normally like this nice okay okay go ahead okay Thank let's you. give the university where is the male marking his territory to attract mate and after mate next <laughs> bye bye that means the female does the whole work and that's when some women tell me well Juan Carlos you're not really telling me something new <laughs> we always pretty much do the same thing for many other species of birds, they both work together. In hummingbirds, where only she does the whole work. And they normally have two babies. Normally two babies. More than two is too much for her. So two babies. So she is incubating the eggs. It's just that she went out. And she does a very good job about the nest. She used moss. She used lichen. She used spider web to hold it and make it very good and flexible. When the babies get bigger, the, the nest kind of opens up a little bit more because the, the hummingbird somehow push it out and, 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 and the nest is flexible. Because when the chicks grow in fast, they need more space. Because the nest is very, very small. I don't know if you guys can see it from here, but it's a very small nest. You see where the nest is? Yes? Yes? Did everybody see it? Yes? No? Okay, I'm gonna use this green light one second, right here, right there, just above the green light. Now it's easy, huh? <laughs> All right. So this is an example that we can go by here, and we never probably see that nest if you don't know it's there. I mean, it just looked like part of the forest, very well camouflaged. Exactly. Ship out up there in case there is a bird eating something that sound that's a small type of toucan it's called emerald emerald toucanet it's a small the only green the only the only toucan in the cloud forest and uh, that's what i was expecting because they like to come to eat the berries uh, this brown leaf tree that one there and this one here they're ripening fruits now they are related to the hibiscus and the hibiscus family. And the fruits, we call the fruit the doll's, doll's eye fruit, because they really look like a doll eye. Black with the white on it, and it looks like a doll eye. So that's what I was expecting to see, the chicken it, and I heard it somewhere back here. But it's green. And also that beautiful bird that somebody mentioned before is green. <laughs> the hummingbirds are green. Everything is green, difficult to see, yes. 
but sometimes they show up. Everything is green here. Good, good kind of stay in sights. It's lined. Here it is. Look at my green light. It just, oh, it's moving higher. It's up there. There it goes. There it goes right here. Here's my green light. Just above the green light. That is the chukanet. Okay, I'm going to try to spot it on the telescope. Oh, there, there it goes. <laughs> okay, that's a problem with the birds. They have wings on it. <laughs> oh, and they can fly. Yeah, right. Yes, they do. Uh -huh. I see it again from here, but, 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 it's moving a lot. And you can they don't move. Man. <laughs> Listen, yeah. remember yeah. the car alarm yeah. bird. See the car alarm bird. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm going to Ramfastidae, Ramfastus. Ramfastidae means birds of prey. The two kinds are also the bad guys of the movie. They come after all the birds and they eat the eggs and they eat the chicks. All to can. So they eat fruits, yes, but as well they eat meat. So they also become sometimes terrible. Eating eggs or chick or baby birds. So they're like sometimes very, very mean birds, yes. <coughs> so they become not, not the best. And even the most beautiful and colorful tucan in Costa Rica that is called the Kill Bill or the Rainbow Bill Tucan. Also that one go after after babies and eggs from other birds. So people don't think about Tucans doing that. But they really do. They really do it. Okay, they're still moving. I saw one for the moment. Uh, okay, maybe we can get one. They are, in, they are in that tree in the back. The, the, the tree here, in the gap behind. That's where they're. That's where they're now. But they're still moving a lot. So why? And then it is to be. Uh, sometimes it's easy when they eat a lot. Eat, 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 and then they will stay. Very big, puffy belly because it's too much and sit still. <laughs> sit still for a long time, doing, doing siesta for a long time. So that's easier. But now they're getting enough. So everybody is wasting a lot of energy trying to impress the males, trying to impress the females. In this case, we don't know which one is the male or which one is the female because they both look exactly the same. So we don't know which one is the which one. Not many females have beautiful legs, so maybe if you look at the legs, maybe you can tell. In humans, all females have beautiful legs, so the same for the birds. <laughs> That's what they say. Beautiful legs. Beautiful legs is a female. <laughs> oh well. I uh, saw one and then disappeared. Maybe later we have. Uh, Hard red, shiny, beautiful wood. In the forest, we call that like gold in the jungle. People destroy or cut a lot of the forest just because this. They want to make money out of this. You make more than 100,000 US dollars with one of these big trees. So poaching will go and cut it down illegally because Costa Rica is illegal to cut the forest down, but they will do it for money. I mean, with that amount of money, I mean, imagine how many times you can travel. Or you can buy a house, you can buy a car. So people will, not much in Costa Rica, but in Central America. Mm. And 
Nicaragua and Guatemala and Salvador, Honduran, they are cutting a lot of the mahogany and, and the Amazon rainforest as well. So this is a very old, might be more than 300 years old mahogany tree. Uh, this uh, map of the trails here, on every single intersection we have a map like this that tells you where you are. See like reception that way, Sendero Chomogo, which is this one here, Chomogo, up this way. But now we're going to go like this, up to a little waterfall here, and we're going to come back like that, okay? But we're right there. So on every single intersection, there is a map like this that tells you where you are and where to go, okay? Uh, this is only 5% of the whole entire park. The idea is that the money we make from here, that's enough to protect the rest of it. After the tour, you say, well, we want to stay longer, we want to walk more. You can do more trails by yourself. There's one hanging bridge inside the forest. There's something that's called the Continental Divide. The Continental Divide is the Rocky Mountains in Canada end up in, in Argentina. What the Continental Divide is, when it rained right here, is what I have to decide to go to the Pacific or to the Atlantic. That means Continental Divide. From this Continental Divide, lower to the Atlantic, a rainforest. From here to somewhere here, cloud forest. And then we start going down to the Pacific, dry forest. When you go anywhere in the Pacific, it's going to be very, very hot and very dry. I call that a bikini area. What, that's when most people go there and oh, relax and stay there for a couple of days and then go home. Because it's hot, hot and dry. And most places that people come from North America, from Canada, from the United States or from Europe, it's cold, so they want to have some good timing before they go home. Pacific size, down to the Pacific. For me, it's too hot. Everything is brown, dusty. It's like, not, doesn't look alive to me. But like I'm saying, for people that likes to go bikini, it's okay. And if you go to Maron Antonio, Maron Antonio have both. You can go to get the sunlight and you also have uh, the national park where you can see a lot of wildlife. Iguanas, um, sloths, monkeys, uh, more wildlife. Manuantor is a very good place to see wildlife. This is more difficult to tell you because it's more dense. If you don't enjoy the forest, if you don't enjoy this natural air condition that I tell you, you're missing the most important. You saw there are birds, there's a colibri, there was toucans, but difficult to see. We also have sloths, we also have monkeys, I tell you. We also have a lot of wildlife, but difficult to see. Every wildlife we see, it's a bonus. It's good. Anyways, this is the trail, so the map only 5%, 5% of the whole park. The idea is protect more and get some benefits out of it. Okay? And more of that plastic wood all over the place. All that recycled plastic. This is an example of how a tree fall over. See all the shallow, yes. the shallow root systems. Yes. So too much weight, too strong wind, then yeah. fall over. It couldn't support it anymore. We see the clouds now, but way up there. See them? Mm. They're coming way up high. Well, those clouds should be here right now. Drop, drop them into the hands. But they're too high to get them. They're getting higher and higher. <coughs> there was a bird sound we just heard. Very, we call him the squeaky door or the rusty game bird. Very unique bird to Costa Rica and Panama. I just heard it. There, there. Listen. See it? It's beautiful sound, isn't it? We call the squeaky door bird. Hopefully sometimes he show up easier and we can see it. But it's a small bird, orange beak, orange uh, legs and a black mask and a kind of bluish body. But that's the squeaky door bird. A rusty gate. Sounds like a rusty piece. No oil in it. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Palm, mm. heart the palm. The orange coloration here is like 
It's the restaurant. Come and get the berries. Eat it and disperse the seeds. Don't be worried about that, my friend. That's water pipe with water pressure. Oh, is it? So it's nothing there. It's just water. We get the water from spring water, spring water, and it goes along to a big tank. And that's because they have pressure, so they're escaping the, 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 the oxygen out. That's why you hear that. Like an animal. I've seen many people climb there looking. <laughs> and there's nothing there, like what you were doing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, when the fruit, when the fruit are ripe, they're black, and that's when the birds eat it. Heart the palm, heart the palm family. We have solids, and they put these slides of palm, heart palm. Well, it comes from a tree related to this one. The scientific name for this one is Camaedoria tepejilote, and when the birds eat the fruit, when the fruit are done, happens something like this, and this is what we call the chicken leg or chicken foot. <laughs> It looks like it. Or sometimes they also call it the bamboo palm because mm -hmm. the trunk looks like a bamboo. Mm -hmm. So this is hard to palm. Attracts the attention to the people because the bright colors. Mm -hmm. But that's also attracting the birds mm -hmm. to eat the fruits at the same time. That was a humming bridge just went by. You hear just that? There. Yeah. It's just, just there. there. You seen it? Yeah, yeah. just on the front. Okay. Uh, I don't see it, but I just heard it went by. Yeah. Oh, I said yeah. just took off. All right. Uh, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. Chicken leg and chicken food. That's how we call that structure. This is big. That's a huge tree, and it has all kind of stuff growing on it, like yeah. I told you yeah. before. Amazing. It's like the whole garden on it. Then we have these flowers. Flowers that just fall off on this oh, plant. Yeah. Because the shape of it, we call the red shrimp, like a little shrimp. See the shape of it, like a shrimp. Yeah. Long, big hummingbird stick the beak inside for the nectar, and the pollen will be just on the front head. So it's a flower adapted for long, big hummingbirds. Mm. But what happened with the short bill hummingbirds? They also need to eat. Right on the bottom here, the short bill hummingbirds poke a hole. See the hole right there? Mm. Wow. Well, they also need to eat, and they come from the bottom, stick the big end, and go. We call them thief stillers. They're not helping the flower to pollinate, but they also need to eat. Mm. Well, eventually the long big hummingbird will come and pollinate the stamens and the pollens right here, and pollinate the flowers. Mm. Acantasia is the name of the family. Rosacea is picata, the scientific name, but red shrimp flowers. That's mm. coming from this plant right here. Anyways, from here where we are now, this way behind, right there, that's the primary forest. Never been cut up. So they only cut down the forest behind this big tree. That is what I told you before. It's the secondary forest. There is a biology. Her name is Nalini Nakarni. She does so many studies in Monteverde. And one of her studies, she wants to estimate, more or less, how many years it's going to take that secondary forest to look like the way it was before. On her study, she said like 1,000 years at least yes. to look similar the way it was before. Imagine when we have fire problems like in the Amazon rainforest or like in Australia, when all the macro and micro and all the wildlife is gone. Never, never again probably. And only 10, 15, maybe 20% come back in after thousands and thousands of years. So that's why Scientists and biologists are so worried about keep protecting the primary forest. Let's keep it, not touch it. Do you have but a problem difficult. with fires? Yes, we do. Especially on the dry forest, on the Pacific dry forest. Mm -hmm. It's very hot and dry. Mm -hmm. That bird sound we hear is called Rockville Mutt Mutt. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a mutt mutt. Around the hotels where you are, it's common to see the one we call Blue Crowned Mutt Mutt. Blue with the red eye with the two little rocket tails on the bottom. Around the hotels, they're very easy to see. And this is related to the, to the blue crown mud mud. See that? It's back there somewhere. But that is a mud mud.
Uh, we, we were the first countries, I think, in the world that have no army. So since that is very stable political country, yes, it is. So you guys, we have this big tree here. It's called the Strangler Fig Tree that you've probably seen before. So all we see are roots that came from the top down, around, on top of another tree. And what happened to that original tree? It rots and it's already gone. If you look inside, there's hollow, empty, all the way to the top. Why is that? Because the original tree is already gone. So he already kills it. And it's called Strangler Fig Tree. We strangle another tree. So he's a killer. And it's a type of fig. When he has fruits, he produces fig fruits. Good for birds, good for animals to come and eat. It's a fig. Let's strangle another tree. Not another fig. Another kind of fig. Big strangler thing. It might be more than 200 years because the original tree is totally gone. That's the size. The forest is like a big city. You cannot just have like I said before, B and B, bed and breakfast. <laughs> you need to have all the things. But well, the forest is the same. It's not just figs. We need to have all the kinds of trees. And what, um, is it monkeys for the fit that take Everybody the figs? Everybody likes to eat the figs when they're ripe, <laughs> yes. Monkeys, bats, yeah. uh, birds, oh, everybody will come. If this is a famous restaurant when the figs are ripe. <laughs> right now they closed the restaurant. I think they went for a vacation. I mean, there's no fruits at the moment. But when they have fruits, very good. Now it's the only place to stay in. Yeah. And we climb inside with the torch. I don't know how many wildlife we will find. Mm. Probably be owls sleeping, maybe uh. snakes, spiders, bats. So much wildlife living inside there. Mm. So it's a very good place. And you can see spider webs a lot yeah. right there. From outside and from in the inside, mm. it's mm. full of wildlife. Mm. That's why I say B and B, bed and breakfast like all exclusive hotel where everything is included huh mm. kind of it's a very old strangler we call it in spanish aguacatillo that means little avocado mm. and this is big and compared to many other species that we have that they're much smaller somebody mentioned the beautiful bird called the quetzal mm. well 80 percent of the quetzal diet is avocado yeah. So whatever the avocados, there are possibilities that they come to eat the fruits. In this case, this is too big, but they normally swallow the whole thing, digest it for about half an hour, remove the flesh out of it, because 90% is a seed, it's a big seed inside, and then he will, after half an hour, he will spit out or regurgitate the, peat, the seed. And then that's how they disperse the seed all over the forest. But basically, this is what they remove, and this is already the seed inside there. Mm -hmm. So just remove this little skin. That's when people ask me many times, can we eat them? They're not toxic. I mean, they're edible. But you need hundreds to make a little <laughs> guacamole. Yeah. They're too small. Too small. But you grab it and smell it. Smell like a green avocado. When you have oh, it, yeah. smell, wow. smell, smell good. Green avocado. So yeah, in Spanish, we call it aguacatillo. That means little or small avocado. Smell mm -hmm. good, smell green. So where's the tree? The tree is this one here and this other one on the back. Right. There are two avocados. Probably this one comes from that one on the back right there. This big tree right there. It's very interesting because huge trees produce the little avocados and the small avocado trees produce the big avocados. Yeah. It's like the opposite way. We have uh, more than 70 species of avocados. So, long. so this is one of the many species. Good. It depends, depends. It could be possible that they eventually make. This is hybrid. Avocados, the, the number one avocado we have in the forest here is called Perse Americana. It's about that big. That's the progenitor avocado of all the avocados. So any avocado we eat came from that one, but they hybrid, 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 and make different kinds of yeah. avocados. What's this one here, these two? With the many leaf like yeah. split, it's called Cicropia tree. Cicropia, Cicropias is the family. All right. And places like Manuel Antonio, it's very common to see the sloths. 
the tree toads lost like to eat the leaf and the fruit of that tree. So sometimes they also call it the sloth tree. All right. Sloth tree. In Costa Rica, people call it guarumo. Guarumo. Or cicropia. Cicropia tree. Looks like papaya. Many people confuse it with papaya, but no, not even close <laughs> to the papaya's family. It's called cicropia. Cicropia tree. Yeah, because we have quite a lot of people. Many insects eat ferns, they're primitive plants and different, but you can see many holes on the other leaf. That's the bugs, crickets, walking sticks, caterpillars come to eat. You see the stick insect right here? But on the fern it looks more like part of the fern leaf, so it probably feels yeah. more comfortable. Just like home. Yeah, it is yeah. just like home. Yeah. <laughs> ferns and stick insects. <laughs> <laughs> They don't find many dead standing trees in the forest and the wood that they use have to be soft because the bills are not as strong as a woodpecker and there are not many so we're trying to put this artificial nest to help them to nest there that's the idea the quetzal the beautiful bird that it's starting to nest at this time of the year yep there are many of those